guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's episode is going to be all about the Sephora Pro Pigment Eyeshadow Palettes. They came out with three versions. I purchased two, the Warm and the Cool. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on these and to take a look at some swatches, then just keep on watching. So there's been quite a bit of buzz about these eyeshadow palettes, whether they're worth the $68 price tag, are these better than the regular Sephora products that can be a little bit hit or miss? So I just wanted to go through, you know, my thoughts on these and what I came across when I used them. So I purchased, again, I purchased the Warm Palette, which comes in a box with like gold accents. Um, it has a nice color chart on the back. It also comes with a sort of pamphlet of like different, if you want to use different looks and like what colors in the palette um, you'd want to use to achieve those looks. Here is the Warm Palette. You can see I've already kind of beaten it up quite a bit already. So each palette comes with 28 shades. Uh, let's talk about the Warm Palette first. I believe this is like the most popular one out there. Everyone is sort of talking about this one. It comes with this overlay um, that have the shade names on them. So it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit like the Natasha Denona, except the Natasha Denona um, overlay is like attached and it's perforated. You can take it out if you want. This is uh, separate. So um, that, I don't know, that's a little bit annoying to me. I really like having the shade names on here. And the first thing I noticed when I, <laughs> when I got my Sephora box. So I had ordered these two palettes. Um, let me just show you what the cool one looks like while we're here. Um, but we'll go into further depth with the cool one a little bit later. Um, so when I got my box, I had ordered these two palettes and a bottle of foundation. But the box felt like I had ordered books. And I thought, what, is this Sephora? I was really confused. I thought, God, it's so heavy. What samples did I order? You know, I went through my head. Anyway, I finally opened it, and I realized that these palettes are extremely weighty. They're very, very heavy, I think, for uh, what they are. I mean, they're just a plastic, um, you know, hard plastic case. So I think, I don't know, maybe it's, you know, good quality. Maybe that's why they're heavy, but I just find it incredibly um, cumbersome like you are not gonna want to travel with these if you're a makeup artist I think it's really going to bug you that you're gonna have to lug around these um, heavy palettes um, I like hard plastic versus cardboard but I, I've you know I've used plastic palettes this size and they're just not they're just not this heavy so I don't know why <laughs> I don't know why they have to be so heavy but they are um, just be cognizant of that. So there are 28 shades and uh, they retail for $68. Again, a little bit pricey for Sephora products, but really not, not too bad considering you're getting 28 shadows. And if they perform well, and if you like these shadows, then I really don't think it's that steep of a price, personally. I was looking on the back of this box because I wanted to see how many different formulas there were. And there are three sets of ingredients. So I think there's three different formulas in here. Obviously there's a matte, there's a shimmer, and then there's a formula, this one in the middle here, that I think is supposed to be kind of like a pressed glitter. I think it's supposed to kind of go over other shades and kind of enhance them in a way. And that is, now let's take a look at this uh, sheet here. This is the wrong one. So that formula pertains to three shades in here. So this peach color, this uh, brown sugar, and then this color here, which is called coconut shell. So this like middle color here. These colors swatch terribly. I don't think that they work well at all. They're not pigmented at all. You can barely pick up anything on your brush when you use them. Um, I know people have had moderate luck with it because they'll just kind of go at it. They'll use, you know, a synthetic brush, they'll press, they'll use glitter glue, all these sorts of things. I just don't even think the color payoff is worth it. Um, especially these two colors, the coconut shell and this brown sugar, I don't know why they bothered making two of them. They're very, very close. Um, and the peach, I had really actually very, very high hopes for that. So, you know, this being kind of like a showcase shade in the palette, especially when you kind of take a look at it, you bring up the Sephora page. That, that one and the brick color next to it are the two colors 
that caught my eye, probably caught everyone's eye, these two colors. And for one of them to be just this weird formula, I was really disappointed. Um, other than that, I like the formula. The mattes, I think, perform really, really well. They're pigmented, they're very, um, they're easy to blend. They're probably not quite as easy to blend as, let's say, the Natasha Denona um, eyeshadows. But again, you know, these are not nearly as expensive as those. Um, the shimmer shades are very nice. I find them to be very, very pigmented. Um, if I were to be extremely picky, I would say they're maybe a little bit chunky, if you will. They kind of um, maybe exaggerate any texture I may have on my eyelids. I suffer from, you know, Amelia, Amelia type things on my around my eyes. And so if I have a bump, I have noticed that it does sort of accentuate that. That's not, for me, that's not really a problem. I don't expect them to be, you know, like I have a blurring effect. Um, so just that one formula, I was really disappointed. I won't use those three shades. I don't like them. Um, the other thing I noticed, and you can probably see it in this palette, is there is um, an extreme amount of like powder kick up. It's like as soon as your brush grazes the pan, there's like a ton of powder. So um, again, that doesn't necessarily bother me. I just, you know, that's just a result of this particular formula. For me, it's just how do they perform? Um, I know a lot of people are concerned with that because it's, it's kind of like a waste of product. You know, you're dipping your brush in and like half of whatever you're moving around is just sort of wasted and blown, blown away. Um, but with that said, again, I do really like um, how they perform. I basically have all the mattes um, kind of in my crease and upwards. I used pretty much the first four shades in this row here, um, and then I dipped into these last two, and then I dipped into these dark three colors to kind of um, get like a, a nice gradient effect. And then I used a bunch of the shimmer shades. So these three here, I used uh, for my lid to create this sort of soft cut crease situation. Um, I really liked it. I, you know, I'm having a lot of fun with this palette. I think you can come up with a gazillion different looks. Um, I think if you were to get both the warm and the cool palette, let's say you just, you know, maybe you're someone who doesn't like to buy a lot of things, but you really feel like, you know, I really want to start playing with eyeshadow. I think if you got both of these, you would be set. You would pretty much be good to go. You have almost every single color that you'd want to use in here. I mean, it's missing um, between these two palettes. When I take a look at them, I feel like they're missing maybe some really kind of um, exciting blues and uh, greens. There's actually like no greens actually in either of these uh, palettes. So um, that is sort of a miss. There is that third palette, however, called the editorial palette, which I didn't get because there's a whole row of very bright colors that I knew I probably would never ever use. But outside of that, it looks like they have a you know, like a, a wonderful array of colors. So maybe if you want to lean more towards the warm or the cool, you would get one of these and maybe the editorial palette if you feel like you're going to want to use like more, more color and go for more colorful looks. With that said, I do think that these are worth the $68 considering you get 28 shades. I think it's actually a pretty decent deal. If you're a makeup artist and you want to kind of just throw these into your kit, I would not suggest these. They're just freaking heavy. It's like one of those things, it's like when I got my iPad, you don't think it's that heavy, but then when you add it to your bag, all of a sudden your bag weighs a ton. That's what these palettes would do. So I don't recommend it for anyone who plans on traveling with these, unless you don't care. Unless you actually don't care about weight, maybe you're just rolling everything around, then fine. Um, because the packaging is fairly sleek, you know, it's not, it's not terribly bulky, they're just heavy. <laughs> Maybe I'm a wuss, but they're just really heavy. Yeah, I mean, I do, I really do like the shade selection. There's a lot of neutrals, you know, for, you know, the top row, the bottom row, pretty much all neutrals. And then in between, you kind of have some funkier shades, like this khaki color, I think is really, really interesting. Um, and you'll see these in the swatches. And you know, you've got some nice peaches, you have this nice uh, kind of burnt orange color um, over here. And you know, you have your kind of brownish reds, you have this bright brick. So I think 
there's a lot that you can do with this palette. And again, I really like the matte and the satin kind of shimmery shades very much. I think they work really, really well. So why don't I stop rambling and we'll get into swatches. So we're going to start with the first row and then we'll go down to the next row and then down and I'm going to be going from left to right. So I'm going to start with the first row now. I have canvas, oat, biscotti, camel. And all I did was like a pretty gentle swatch, a swirl of the finger in the pan, if you will. And um, as you can see, I just did one swipe with the finger and the color payoff is pretty decent. You can see how kind of dusty um, canvas is. And then next we have ochre, saddle, and auburn. So all of those shades are matte. Very lovely. This ochre color is so pretty. But these are all great sort of lid transition shades. Really lovely. So next we'll do this second row. We have sand, brass, clay, and copper. And so these three are shimmer shades and this clay color is a matte shade. Really pretty. And then next we have bronze, adobe, and sandstone. There's that powder. So this one is a satiny shimmer shade and these two are mattes. Again, really lovely. Great color payoff. Next we'll do this third row here. Hazelnut, khaki, peach, and brick. Terracotta, burnt umber, and chestnut. So this peach color is of that formula that I'm not a fan of. You can see how faint that is. And when you're brushing that over the eyes, it really just brushes away. But the rest of these are matte except for brick. Brick is one of the shimmer shades. Uh, but the rest of these are all matte colors. And now we'll do this last bottom row here. We have brown sugar, caramel, sepia, and coconut shell. Cocoa, cedar, obsidian. So brown sugar and coconut shell are that same formula as peach that I'm not the biggest fan of. These two actually swatch decently and coconut shell performs the best out of those three, but still not great by any means. And then the rest of these colors are mattes. So out of the 28 shades, there's 20 uh, in the matte formula. There's five in that shimmery satin formula and there's three in that glittery formula that I don't like. And also just for your information, here are the ingredients. I know some people were wondering if there was carmine in there. Um, it states for all three of the formulas that product may contain carmine. So just so you know, uh, but take a screenshot of this if you're interested. All right, so let's talk about the cool palette. So here is the cool palette. It's really wonderful. When I opened it up, I immediately thought if you want to go for like that unicorn look, this has pretty much got you covered. It has like really soft, you know, pinks over here. It's got the hotter pinks, oops, the hot, see it's heavy, the hotter pinks over here and um, you have some nice sort of uh, satiny, shimmery colors. So I was looking for that formula, the one that I did not like in the warm palette and I was looking for it in the cool palette. And while there isn't the exact formula in this palette, there is a formula in this palette that behaves the same way and again, there's three colors in here that consist of this sort of not so great formula. So it is this shade Moon, which is in the bottom corner here. Um, this shade up here, which is Tool, and then this shade, which is Pink Champagne. And again, I was a little bit pissed because when I take a look at this palette, my eye is drawn to this Pink Champagne color and I was really excited for this particular color, but these three shades perform the same way as those three shades in the warm palette that I didn't like. It's this kind of like just chalky, kind of like a pressed glitter effect that 
it just doesn't it just doesn't do anything it it kind of just brushes away it doesn't really it just doesn't really show up especially if you add it on top of another color it just kind of blows away so it's nothing like the Natasha Denona press glitters which may be very very messy to use but they're very effective I mean you do get like an overlay of glitter where you don't really with these shades so I was a little disappointed in those three uh, but thankfully, it is only those three colors that I think don't perform very well at all. Um, I should mention, because I did mention how much powder kick up there is with this shadow, that there isn't actually any fallout. I've been really, really pleasantly surprised about that. Every time I've used these palettes, I've done my eyes first. You know, I thought, oh, they're so powdery. Let me just make sure I don't do, you know, my, my makeup first and screw that up with any fallout. And there hasn't been any fallout you know I've even taken a close look and kind of used my brush to brush anything away and there really hasn't been anything so I've been very impressed with that with the lack of uh, fallout yeah I don't have much more to add to the cool palette because the mattes and the satiny shades are lovely um, and again I do like this um, color range if you're more into cools except that there isn't a lot of um, blues and purples which I sort of associate with cooler colors um, so like these two blues that I see and this one these are all very gray I don't know if they're coming off on camera in fact in my viewfinder they look a little bit more vibrant than they are in person um, so these are actually very very gray uh, blues which makes them very cool tone blues but um, you know you don't get a lot of range there and there isn't any sort of like purple like kabam violet kind of purple there are these colors which are more like raspberry um and then you know this is just a very very light pink which maybe could be construed as lilac depending on the lighting and then yeah and then there's like all of these that kind of, a little bit off like this one is a very gray purple um, these two shimmers are very soft there, so there isn't a lot of, for you purple lovers out here, there really isn't a lot of purple going on in here. So again, I think they made up for that in the editorial palette. I don't have that one and um, I've only looked at it online and we know how the colors can be off online. So I'm not exactly sure, um, but I would hope that Sephora kind of made up for that in that editorial palette. So that's my, sort of my, my thoughts on the cool palette. Um, so let's jump right into the swatch. Okay, so we'll swatch the cool palette the same way we did with the warm. We'll start from the top to the bottom. So I'll start with this uh, top row first. Here is linen, powder, seashell, and tulle, latte, flax, violet gray. So these barely show up because they're pretty much the same color as my skin. But all of these are matte except for seashell, which is like a satin color, and then this tulle color, which is like that, um, that formula that's a little bit off to me, that kind of pressed glittery formula. And you can see how just kind of patchy and ineffective it is. And then these three are matte. So next we'll do this second row, ballet, cashmere, Tea Rose, Pink Champagne, Rosé, Orchid Mist, and Croquis. So these first two colors and this last color are mattes. This color, the Tea Rose, the Rosé, and the Orchid Mist are all of that uh, satiny uh, metallic color, and then this pink champagne color is that pressed glitter um, type of formula which is not my favorite and again you can see how it's patchy I especially love this rosé color it's so pretty it's almost like a duochrome and then next let's do the third row ash mushroom fog and graphite heather gray mauve orchid so on this row this is the only satin shade we have the rest of these are all mattes and this bluish gray is really unique it's very very pretty and this mushroom makes a great cool tone transition shade and now let's do the last row we have moon 
rosewood, coffee, hot chocolate, espresso, sketch, and obsidian. So Moon is of that pressed glitter formula that I'm not a fan of. Again, you can see how patchy it is. And then Rosewood and Sketch are satin colors. And then the rest are mattes. And Obsidian is the one color that is in both palettes, this black color. So in this palette, there are 17 shades that are matte, 8 that are of the satiny metallic, and then three of that sort of pressed glitter formula that I'm not a fan of. <laughs> and then here is the ingredient information for this cool palette. If you're interested, go ahead and take a screenshot. Um, again, people were interested in whether Carmine or not was included in these ingredients, and they are for the matte and the satin shimmery shades, and not for that pressed glittery shade. So all in all, I do like these palettes, except for that one formula. Um, I really appreciate the quality of the mattes. I think that those are the best. The satiny shimmer shades are lovely as well, but I do like the mattes the most. They are very, very powdery, but I didn't experience any kick up. And I think for $68, the, these are a very decent palette. You know, you get 28 shades, which is nothing to sneeze at. I really enjoyed them. I'm obviously having some fun with them. This is a look that I created just with the warm palette. If for whatever reason you may be interested in this look, let me know. Um, I didn't want to do a demo in this particular video because this was just going to be long with the swatching of all 28 colors in each palette. So I didn't want to drag out this video too much. But if you do want a demo of uh, the warm palette for this particular look, let me know in the comments below or give this video a thumbs up. Um, you can let me know that way and I'd be happy to create a video uh, for that. So I do hope you enjoyed that video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Give it a thumbs up if you do want maybe a, a tutorial on this particular look. I'd be happy to do that. And yeah, subscribe down below if you haven't already. I would love that. Please join the family and I will see you in the next video.